Hello, everyone. How are you guys? I like. I, I can see some of the rows empty in the front. You can come in the front. I won't bite if you want. So, yeah. Thank you for joining in. Uh, I'm glad uh, you want to learn a little bit more about the game art pipelines and how I do things. So, in this talk, basically, we will do these. Things. I just want to do it quickly so we can have some time for Q&A because we have a lot to cover. So these will be like main steps. Basically, I will talk about a lot about myself and then and all the experience I have and then how I did things in Blender and how I do it now as professionally and how I will do it in the future. And then what's on the big box? That's basically we'll open the files. We look inside how I made those and try out some things. And I'll, in the end, I will share some resources, some workflows, some tutorials, if you guys want to be an environment artist or just want to learn about game art in general. So I have a lot of references and tutorial links attached. So, little bit disclaimer, nothing is complete. So you can go to this tiny link and you will find this presentation in the link. Uh, it's my link tree, you have my socials. Plus on top, you'll find my presentation download link. You download it. And because uh, I see we all have computers, we might not need computers uh, because it's not that heavy and we are all artists. We just need imagination too. We can imagine like things are happening and we have like, yeah, everything is fine and going smooth. And yeah, so that is uh, basically, and again, I will talk a lot, a lot about myself. And if you think I'm a narcissist, maybe I am. So, so yeah, so then, uh, yeah, so about me, <laughs> yeah, so it's basically the same thing, uh, sorry, I am working with the games from uh, like more than seven years, I worked in architectural, motion graphics, ads, like before that for like three, four years, and I love games, uh, so I just turned into and it happened, I worked on some nice project like Unranger 5 demo, Forza Horizon, and Hunter Simulator, there are so many more. I could not fit everything on this, but these are like I'm really, really proud of. And that empty box, there, those are canceled projects, basically. So, <laughs> so you can imagine all the project canceled, and so they might fit in there. And yeah, so some of the companies I worked uh, in the past, and you might notice something. It's like, what Blender Kid is doing here? And it's like, it's not AAA game company, but you know, see, I said I worked with great people. So Blender Kid guys are great. So uh, they are the reason I'm here. So they just, like I have, was in love with Blender, but they just doubled it, like square root, square, yeah. So thank you to them as well. So yes, my very first awesome work. I just wanted to start with the same thing, like how, what I was, I just want you to know. And I was not bad at modeling that time. I was bad at Blender, basically. And you know, Blender 2.7. Uh, tell me, how, raise the hand, how many people have used Blender 2.7 or before? Nice, you know the pain. So, <laughs> yeah, so I suffered a lot. I, 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 I was working on some freelance projects and I thought like, oh, it's free. I don't have to buy license and I should use it. And then I was like, no, it looked bad. Look at those normal issues, hard edges. And like, I didn't even know about hard edges. I thought like, this is how it should be. Like, Sci-fi look with hard edges. But yeah, so this was actually a revenue share project. I worked with some a game studio on from Polycount. So they needed an artist. I said, like, I will help you. So that's how I started learning. And this is the very first thing I made. And that was the very last thing I made in Blender. I said, like, no, I cannot do it. I, I will go back to other 3D software. And the biggest thing I felt in Blender was UI and uh, it's hard to learn. Basically everyone just said, but when released 2.8 came, then that excuse go out of the way. Then I just tried it again. I say like, I was good at modeling, but up, then I started learning, I improved. So these are the models I made. Uh, this is the very first model I made in Blender 2.8. Then I made full game ready prop. And this I sculpted also in Blender and modeled it also in there. I wanted to texture, but I didn't want to give myself more pain to going into texture and you know baking processes. So I did it in other softwares. And then that tiny little, Screenshot is actually a 360 ad video. My friend reached out to me, he said like, we need a medical video and you can go to present and watch it on YouTube over there. And 
that was like full 360 ad I made in Blender. But I did not compose it. Again, I don't want to give myself more pain. So this is enough, I thought. So 360 render I did and I composed it in other software. And yeah, so this, I was really proud of that. I did something new in a new tool. And come to now, then I did some professional projects. And this is my portfolio. This is not exactly what I did, but similar I did. I cannot share the screenshot, but that's what I made in Blender. And that's like sci-fi gun. So you see that my old gun and then this new gun and stuff like that. So you can compare basically and how we improve. So this is, uh, I think in 2020 or 2019. So like it's two years of journey and we are here. And this is what I made the last, this is my last personal work, all the assets. Uh, uh, are made like castle, that bridge, these logs, uh, houses, everything is made in Blender, but composed in under the engine, right? And yeah, so this was uh, my last project and a little bit of my portfolio and a lot about me, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so this, there are a bunch of assets again, so this is uh, in Blender and mixed off things, so because I use multiple tools, so I just wanted to try and tell the world that I can know, I know all the tools. So there's like mix of work and that uh, uh, the corridor, uh, anyone know the reference? Where from the corridor is? Raise the hand if someone knows. Nice. Yes. Yes, awesome. Yeah, so that's from Big Bang Theory and I thought like I will make something simple, smaller and simple and that took two months to make. And, and I was like, ah, oh. so even if it's a smaller, it takes a lot of time, so you should consider even starting something like there's a lot of learning going on. So yeah, this is my current portfolio and yep, I'm proud of so much of the work, a lot. <laughs> so yeah, so now we come to part two, which is like, there will be a lot of theory. And if you feel like sleepy and it's like, I need a coffee break, you can go and, but don't go, I, I will feel bad. Like, I feel like you're leaving. Uh, I'm panic. I'm like, why people are leaving? And so <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Just hold your pee also. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so. Basically, a path to environment goes from props. These everything, these cup, the notebooks, everything you have in your table is a prop, right? And every this table, every object in the world is a prop. So it go from there, and then you make larger props. I will explain why. And then there are huge assets, basically not larger like gigantic, but they are also assets like my castle and the bridge. They are like huge assets. But how will you make them according to the pipeline? And I will explain. And then when you club these three into environment alongside the terrain and some biome that becomes uh, environment, right? A scene, you compose a scene. So if you have completed the three steps, you can focus on uh, environment and you just club everything you learn. And do that. I will explain each of the step. And yes, prop. So in props, basically, we all know modeling and texturing. It's not about that. It's about doing things properly. These, these, these words, do not mean to you, but these are really, really important. And if you've been to Eva's talk yesterday and you've been to real time challenges talk yesterday, they have touched upon these things. And I will explain why now in this also. Thank you guys, Eric. I'm sorry, I forgot the name of you guys, but thank you guys if you're here for making that talk. You made my life easier. I had cut down so many slides. I was like, nice, they have done it already. I will just cut it down. So, yeah, they, so polys were needed. So is basically, if it's a hero prop, it's like that's my personal work. So you feel like this is like the topology is like too many edges there, but that was my personal work. I can do whatever with it. This one was a uh, uh, asset for a test. So this one is like fully open. They say like 3000 poly, uh, polycount we have only. So you have to, you know, uh, you know, put in, like, this is the same as well. It's like, it's Gaudi lamp from Barcelona. It's really nice. But you see this have so much detail in there and I had to do it within the polycount. And that's the challenge. Uh, so you have to optimize it a lot. And then only edges were needed. If it's adding to the silhouette or the shape, then only add the edges in there, use cut, and uh, don't put the loops all over them. So just optimize. This is the most important thing. You have to optimize it. And for the personal work, you can be a little bit chilled out. Okay, so no need to stress. I will start to get this to be serious because this is a serious, I don't want to joke in between, but okay, you can laugh, you can smile. Okay, don't make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next. Weight and normals. And yeah, uh, this another, I will give reference for the talk. There's like making files smaller and uh, optimal or I think faster. Yeah. So in that talk, they talked about like the normals, like how it should be smooth. 
I, I believe it should not be smooth, it should be weighted smooth. Basically, what is weighted smooth is, basically, I, every slide have this link below. So if you want to learn more, you can go there and learn more about what that means. But basically, the, these the pointy li uh, lines you see, those are the normals. It's just tell the model how it will be shaded. So the bigger the face, the more it inclined toward. So that it give it a more smooth look. That flat surface look flat and the bevels look more smooth. You don't need three edges to make it look round. So it, in low poly also it give it really now round look if you have weight in normals. Then I can actually show you side by side also. So here I will show you uh, quickly. So if we have take a cube because I have to show you five right? so otherwise we'll just keep talking. Just when you're tired of listening to me, just say like, uh, I will just open Blender and do something. <laughs> so if, if, if we bevel this, let's so say we have some smoothing options here, right? It's like shade flat and shade smooth and auto smooth. And so if you shade smooth this, this will look like this, which is not good, okay? And this should be flat, right? So this basically, but what if we have bevel on this? And if we shade flat, this edges will be visible. And what if we make it smooth? This is still looking a bit wonky, right? And what you do, we in Blender, we have a simple modifier called weight and normals. You do this and what you say, like, okay. So you come here, that's the first thing I will show you. Turn it off. Here in the normals, you have auto smooth. This is the same thing like auto smooth. You do it, it turn it on. It basically tell like at what angle of edge it should smooth it or harden or uh, keep the edge hardened. So I will say like, it's like, I believe 45 maybe. So I, I usually keep it 60, 60 is a good number. 50 to 60 in between, you can keep or you can play with, you can keep it more also. And uh, if you just want to make, see it turned back to same smooth option. So you don't know what's the difference between these two. So now one, once I apply this now, you see the difference, right? So you see this is like more round now, like, but there are like only one edge. So this is like, you can keep it low poly, but give it this beveled look using better normal. So if we are making default, don't make it smooth, make it weighted smooth. So that's one, it's, it's every model we work on, this just go by default. No model go without it. So even if you before baking, before anything, this has to be done, the normals. So that's why like say people don't think this uh, it matters. But if you put subdivision on this, like subdivision guys who use subdivision mod, uh, modeling, they won't, uh, to them it won't matter because subdivision modifies somehow fix this because there are most edge loops and normal don't spread across. They just bound to that edge. So it just works. So like if, we, if I say one, so if you loop here, let me just turn it off. So, so now, right, I uh, will remove this one. So this is smooth, right? So if I add an edge loop, so you see it's normal are confining themselves. So like if you have more edges, they just support each other. So they look kind of good. So that's why uh, on low poly models, weight normals are really, really important. So yeah, so just always. So if you're making a default, please blend guys, make it weighted normals, not smooth. And yeah, Texel SD, yes. Uh, how many guys know about Texel SD? Awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, they in the, uh, the real time talk, they touched upon it. And there, there's a like small uh, fun thing. Uh, my brother is in engineering, okay? So he do a lot of audits. So whenever he come home, he said like, I had an audit, so I got late. So my mom started calling him audit. So, <laughs> so if my mom call me something, she will call me normal or textile density. <laughs> because I talk about this so much. So this is the most important step before you even start texturing, right? So what is textile density? Textile density basically defines how many pixels should be visible in a, a one meter or a surface uh, in throughout the world. Imagine there you have a small problem, imagine look uh, that image, you have a, a stairs there and you have a wall there. Those boxes defines the number of pixels. That should be even throughout the world. Otherwise you will see some asset might have high resolution texture and some might have low resolution texture. How do you calculate it? How you make it even using texture density? And yeah, I have attached a really nice add-on, texture density and uh, UV project I will talk about later on, uh, but texture density is a nice add-on, I will show you now. And there are some links uh, which you can go more in detail. And this first one is nice, uh, is uh, from Michael, I think. It's really nice and just blow your mind, there's too much information. So basically, uh, if we say uh, a texture density is one 
k means 1024 pixels per meter means 100 centimeter that means uh, every if there is a two meter surface it will tile twice if you have 1k texture if you have 2k texture if you have two meter surface it will tile once so it's like it's making it unifying scaling your uvs like that so texture match properly i will show you quickly how like i was looking at suzanne model yesterday so if you go to your editing you install the add-on and so you will find it here text density and uh, for quickly what i will do i will go to add-ons because i will want to talk about a lot of add-ons so so it will stay here so you can just pause and see all the add-ons we're gonna talk about and PyMan is super and machine tool which I use for modeling but others you can see but we'll talk about some of them today like uh, UV Packer, Aligned or uh, Loop Tools or Machine Tool whichever we come along before but if you see this so now uh, we know the size of it from the item right therefore we go wait we know the size of it this is like almost two meter in all the direction right it's three meter in one but two meter almost so Logically, if you know the texture density, and if imagine we have 1K per meter texture density, this is almost 2 meter. That means at least we need 2K texture, right? But it is a 3D object. It will open up and cover more space. That means we need larger than 2K map. And we'll see how much we need. So simply, I will go to edit mode and imagine this UVM. So you will see that on the top, you have this units, which like you guys, uh, mostly it's centimeter we use. You can use meter or you are crazy, then you can use feet, yes. Uh, how you do that like okay this one oh just too back damn good okay okay so um, yeah these look tiny no viewports uh, yeah so if you see uh, in the top there's uh, units you can do it and then there's texture size so there are two ways. You can imagine what texture size you're gonna use and then you can just calculate. And if I say like, okay, we, we said that we need more than 2K, so let's go with 2K for now and calculate. It says five, okay, but we need one, one K per meter. So, so it's like 512 per meter right now. It's like 512 per centimeter, so it will be 5.18 5 means per centimeter, so it, you multiply with 100, it's like 512. So at least it's like it's 512. So before we used to use 512, there are still so many companies use 512, but 1K is good number now because we have hardware. We have, we are getting 40, 90, maybe 50 next year. But yeah, so don't get crazy. Like we still need to optimize a lot. Uh, so yeah, so this one uh, is say 512, but we need, so we will just get it to 4K and it says 1K per meter right now. So now we know like it will fit in 4K, but see what, when I will do, here, uh, I have the 4K texture here. I will click 1K per meter text density preset here. Okay, you can calculate the set value from here and you can put it here, like uh, calculate to set value, it will come here and then you can set my TD. Okay, so my text density. And you see what happened. You saw what happened? Some of them became larger, some of them become smaller. This is another thing. So all the UV islands should be for the same scale and text density tools help with that. That they are using similar texture space or texture, or equal uh, similar pixels per uh, their length of the things and make sure you have frozen your scale and rotation because this will mess it up otherwise you will not see proper result so now now it should be packed right properly so this you see it's going out even with the 1k texture density it's going out but what if i just pack i will for now use it i will explain it uh, this is like simple you can go to the link on the presentation download it it's easy to install it's free and just i will pack before I will just turn off the rotation. You see, it becomes smaller. Now we'll calculate the texture density. So it's seven now, right? But this brought us to a really nice thing about Gamma. If you see, it only fills the half of the texture, right? The top is empty. So what we can do in Gamma, we can just use a rectangular texture. I don't know how many of you guys use rectangular texture. So this is how we can save the memory. We just cut it, we use it, we scale the UVs before export, like two up, but we use half of it. I will show you in the example I made later on, I have used uh, rectangle texture. But you see this, and, and we can play with this texture density also as we played with edge. And so if it's further from the camera, like very higher up or 
in the distance, you can have it lower. But if it's like hero asset, we close, use the one we have defined or maybe more. So if, if we have like 4K, like, you know, we never used 4K in the game. So the 2K is max. So for that, you have to optimize, you have to reuse, maybe uh, cut it to half, mirror the other side to save the space so we can uh, use 2K textures at least. So the 4K is too big uh, for the memory and it's difficult to load. So use smaller textures. And go back to those uh, real-time challenges talk uh, to see all the struggles we have, right? And yeah, so this is for the textile density. I hope uh, this makes sense, but you can go through these talks more and they will explain it more. And uh, it's just basically help us find out what textures we need to export in the game in a way. It's not just keeping it similar, but we can learn how much texture we need like we did for the Suzanne. Yes, that bring to the second uh, in the packing, there are two most important things is if you have hard edge and you need a seam over there and I will show you a little bit why is that and edge padding is also important. So because there are like two phenomena, one is called mipping in games, which is again uh, like LODs for geometry is like texture just keep getting smaller uh, by the distance and it helps uh, running it smoothly. So as you come close, it will be higher resolution will be loaded. And if you go further, the smaller will be loaded. So mipping, when you have them close, and if you have two different color islands, they will bleed into each other, right? So when you make it uh, more, uh, uh, it will kind of blur out, so it will just move. So if I go back to here, so imagine these these are too close here. So imagine if I make it red eyes, and if it lower out, it, you, if you, you will see in forehead some redness in the game in there. So I, I didn't find any way to show the mapping in Blender, but uh, this is there. So I will show you an uh, example in the presentation. And same for the hard edge, you will get artifacts. And I know people say like, why we need to hard edge, but if we go next, you'll see. There, if you can see in there, you see some dotted lines on the edge of the uh, asset. That is because of the same thing. So you need to have hard edge, you need to put seam on that hard edge, so we don't get that type of hard artifacts. You, so you have a smooth bake. And here in the mapping, you see this, when they bake the AO, you see these lines visible, that's because they are too close. And the AO, the, when, the, uh, when AO is baked, it's black uh, on the outside. And you can fix it somehow when you, you can dilate it. So dilation is another way, so it's not black, don't keep it black in the back give a few pixels of padding on the texture when you bake it and make it white. So they don't bleed because all is white. So it doesn't matter if it bleed. But when you have different type of color or things like even uh, like different type of colors or surface information, then this scatticity of this, but this should be, this can be fixed by just dilation. And on top, you see uh, without mating, you will get this simmering. Like simmering, like if you have similar uh, scale of texture. In the distance, you will get this anti-aliasing simmering happening. It looks weird uh, in the viewport. And But when you do the mapping, it smooth out because texture just blur out. It just look like it's just turned smooth. So this is like two big reasons. It's, again, this is just really tiny, but these are really big. Uh, they really, really look bad in the game, uh, in the scene. And we don't want other things to look bad because of our thing. Yes, so that brings us to large prop. This is the asset I made long back. So, and this was actually an art test. So I kept it because I felt so proud of it. I did something crazy with it. So if you have larger asset, so as we see with Suzanne, Suzanne like two meter, three meter wide, and we just want to use 2K texture, it won't fit. Then we have to use tileable textures or trim textures, or maybe overlapping the UVs and you know mirroring it, stuff like that. So for that. Uh, for this, I made uh, this asset. It it was like four meter high, and I had only five twelve by one k textures, so which is really really small for this size of asset. And you can get it done in using unique UVs, which is we will get around three hundred of texture density. We will check, and but with this trim workflow, I got double. So that's like the one uh, one thing I did uh, in there. Let me just check. Yeah. So uh, I will show you the file, but before I will just quickly go through the, what I did in there. So, uh, and yesterday guys talked about the block out, how important it is. So block out is very, very important to know the scale. So I've defined the block out. It's the, it tell you the scale, how big it is. And then I created the trims, all the different elements of this well, we're going to use 
and then like one is rope, one is metal rod, then there's wood plank or tiles, and then is uh, this pole, all them, and then you you did it. So see, we still have a lot of space in there. And then I quickly textured it, like block texture, what I call it, to see if it's working. That somehow was working, and I said like, I was happy to move forward. Then I just like polishing the shape, doing high poly, and then applying to the same mesh, and then uh, in the next, uh, it's the same texture before, but you see with the bake how much different it look, right? And then it's like block out, more detailed block out, and with the bake and with the texture, and this is the like final texture. It is until the third image, it's the same texture we made first. It's just with the baking, it look a bit different. Uh, but that is the like final because what I did, I added some undulation, some shape variation later on uh, to make it look good. And yeah, so this is uh, basically. Thing. I'll sh quickly show you the file. So if I show you the texture, so this is the texture how texture looks like. Okay, so in the normal you can read it better. So you see at the bottom I added sand because I had space. I had to. I still have a lot of space in there. I can put something. I wanted to, but uh, uh, like leaves, grass, you can put some things in there, and you can add it. And this is like top of the uh, in the below uh, on the top. This is the top of the tiles and then tiles and the like, different different details basically. And this is the same packed map, uh, that crazy map. The guys said in the last uh, yesterday in the call, but you can go in the here and you can. Look at that, this is the AO, right? It's packed, okay, which is good. Uh, again, this is like to save the memory. So all the different, uh, we, rather than loading five textures, we are loading uh, three. And we can change this um, textures as per our needs. Imagine you don't need metallic. Like I work with the trees a lot. We don't have metallic in the trees. So we use that for subsurface, that uh, blue channel. So we put uh, subsurface. So I will open. So this is, I just put a little bit IV on top so it look good, right? I'm not hiding anything, it's just to make it look more good. <laughs> so, so yeah, you see uh, here, uh, this is this is the final If I show you the topology here, it's really low poly. Right? See, look at this. Right? And, and the fun part of this is you can achieve more things. Right? Imagine you want to make a swing out of it. You can use the same model. And like imagine these poles are right here. I will duplicate and this can be, uh, we can remove it for now. But I was thinking I will create a wall with a stone wall and with metal bars on top. This is like modeling work. I don't want to go through it. I just explain you the concept. Okay. And you can create different things and it will stay. Like for here, you can make a straighter version of it. You take it. I have messed it up. Is it rectangular? Okay, this is the rectangular because of the thing. Okay. So if I duplicate this and if we use uh, the option like correct face attribute, it's like preserve UVs in Maya and uh, uh, others. And so you can, sorry. And if I move it and you can make it a wall. So this will tile, right? So it's horizontally tiling. So you can make a wall and imagine I want to put some metal rod. I know it's, uh, there is like only one issue because this I made only one side. Here you will see seam. That's the only drawback of using driver. So some places you will seam, but you can hide it very, uh, very creatively. Like I hid in here. Uh, at some places it's still visible. Like I hid underneath these planks. But if you come here, you will still see there is some seams. And you can make this unique also. Like if the side cap make unique, and you can hide it also. But for now, this is there. And what we can do, and we have this, and imagine. We have metal rod, we have metal strip, but we can we can make the rods or whatever the shape, maybe the, the arrow shape in there, and we can map it to that particular trim, and then we can use the same texture. So now, uh, basically the possibility of this, that you can create all the assets which have this similar information. I was thinking like all the garden, old uh, medieval type of looking garden, like you can make a swing with the proper model, you can map it to the wood where you want metal and rope, where you need rope, and everything, it will work. And it will look as good as this, and, and as I have ivy in here, and as I had space, I can map some greens in there, and I kind of put ivy on top of that also. Just mapping the things to the right areas is important. And then you can reuse this in multiple places. Like imagine we had 10 assets we can achieve with the same texture, which is awesome. It's because it wanna save on memory, it's gonna save 
on thing and everyone are gonna love you. It's like, oh, wow, how did you do that? Uh, from the same thing. So yeah, so this is uh, basically uh, the thing. So we'll just quickly, I will show you the textile density part. Okay. So imagine we have this, I'll go to UV editing. I moved it on the side, I think, yeah. So here, so if I check the textile density, okay, this is not here, wait. Maybe I'll open it here. Just give me a second. So this is why I use a machine tool, it's like at controllers, you have export, append, everything is in here. So you don't have to go to file menu and suffer. Basics. So, and but no, no, but we are not suffering, we are loving it. So, yeah, so here, and if we get test density, and if I, I had like 1K texture, you see it's 0.6, but it is tiling on the other side. Like if I pack this one in, in this texture, I would say, okay, pack. Right? And now if we go back to test density, I check, it's almost half of it. So that's how we got double the textile density. We are able to reuse it and we are able to make larger things. So that pole can be tall because it's tiling on one way. You can make it as tall as you want. So this, uh, well, okay, well, let me undo it so it don't look ugly. So if I go here, okay, take your time, no worries. Yeah, here. So here, if I select this and we already have uh, corrective on it's a little bit wonky so uh, uvs can fly off and we can keep it connected and i'll move it up we'll see it 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 is tiling and what i did i i didn't grade it in there because i didn't need it i just wanted something did it but you don't need to but you see you can make it taller it will still tile in there so it will still look good so it doesn't matter how long basically the asset is if it get wider then you might get some inconsistency, but as long as it's taller and have the same width and proportions, it's totally fine. And you can reuse it on, on a lot. Of, you can literally make a hut out of it. And it will work simply. And yeah, so this is uh, an important workflow and that I got to know from the text density because I did the first pass. I just wanted to test, I quickly done it. That's like one hour job, like modeling it and taking it to the texture because some sort of painter, right? You drag and drop stuff. And it just worked. And then I was confidently, I just model, uh, did the high poly based on that low poly and just baked it. See, it, and then it just worked. And once you understand the textile, the power of textile ST, you can just blindly say, okay, this will work because you have calculated it in your mind. Yeah, this things can work. But if it would have been fit in there, then I have to think something else. Unique definitely was not possible. And I didn't want to think about that uh, uh, option. In, in my side. So this is really, really, and I should have spent more time creating. And I, I, if we had time, I will sh will create that swing, basically, or that wall with metal bars or gate with the same texture. Okay. And huge assets. Basically, it's like the larger assets in there. Basically, this is the, another uh, asset I made. Basically, this one, uh, prints might not be useful here because they are like wide also, you will have different type of shapes and everything. So what will be useful here? Like different, different texture sets or materials and you blend them together. And there are different ways to blend in them. The very first one is vertex color. You get vertex color for free in there and you can utilize it. And all the assets you export in game come with vertex color, right? And you can utilize it. In some way, like how uh, is it, we have usually RGB and you can do it in Blender also. RGB and these three can have three layers on top. Basically one base layer you can have, then you can put one with R, like wherever the uh, red color, vertex color is white, the material will be visible and where is black, it won't be. And then you can multiply or blend it with noises to make it look good, not just gradient going through the thing. And same, uh, material blending the same, uh, you can use it with the vertex color or you can use it with the masks. Masks are simply, you can use very low resolution images and if you don't want to use water, you can use very low resolution images like 128 or 64, depending on the assets. And just give some uh, color based on the uh, UVs. And then use those masks to apply the other thing. Like uh, uh, you can uh, 
put damage on there, we can put dirt on there, or let the cavity thing is mostly not possible in the streams or tileable thing that you can achieve using masks or vertex color. And if you, you will see in that image, uh, there is some dirt on top of it and some places you see damage. Some are part of the model as some is, uh, some is the thing. I will open the file, I'll show you. So you just close your eyes, squint your eyes because it have, might have normal applied. So I don't want to blind you all guys with this blue light. <laughs> yes, close your eyes. <laughs> so I applied normal because it's better to see the details in there. But uh, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, it's not here. Okay, nice. Okay, let me just check if we have box unwrap, which I really want to do. Box. Let me install it. So it's the link is also, what, it did not install? Nice, thank you very much. I uh, know it says it might not work with this one, maybe old one, it might work. So what it do, it project. I, I don't want to create the setup. It What it does, it create empties with a scale and then it project the UVs on there. So that means you can uh, use the same UVs throughout the asset. So imagine I want to create another wall in here. So here, we have some UV project here, right? So uh, I'll duplicate it. Okay. So you see the texture is projecting, okay? And, uh, and if I want a longer version of it, uh, you can use preserve UVs, but that is based on the asset. What I want is to keep the same textile density throughout all the walls. So I can cre quickly create a variation of this wall. Maybe I want, uh, uh, maybe this one, I will make a longer one. So, and you will see that I'm doing So what I will do, I will select the hierarchy and duplicate the whole thing. So I will show you what other things are. So what that does, it just create these empty. You will find it here, in here collection, it is empty with the different directions. You can use uh, six, eight, 12, like, you can go crazy. and. It just set it up automatically and create the projected and say which direction. And then you can scale this, the main guy here. You can scale it up and, oh sorry. Uh, you can scale it up and down and then UVs will scale with it, right? And then you define one text density and all the assets come in here, like all the huge, large, which can use uh, tileable textures will have the similar. And it will not ju it just don't work on only on the model. It work on the texture. We are not talking too much about texture, but your texture should be also based on the same texture density. Imagine we have like one K per meter, for example. So you see how many bricks come in like in that, those buildings like they're like brick is like 20 centimeter wide, then one meter might have five bricks and then two meter texture might have 10 bricks. So now you have a 2K texture, which covers two meter of surface in the real world. So when you map it using the textile density on the asset, you know it's correct. Okay, so the both ends should be uh, correct. And then otherwise you will feel like why it is not matching. So the texture guys have to create it properly. Usually we have texture guys different in the team who create textures, they create this in mind. And we UV it keeping that textile density in mind. It defined before we may start of the project. It has to be defined because everyone will create the similar textures and similar scale of the thing. So what I will do, I will quickly uh, do the same thing. I can just extend it. Imagine I want to extend it. And then what I did, this is just a bunch of manual work. That's like this edge. I went with the knife tool. Imagine here, I uh, went with the knife tool. I made a cut and the bricks like this. And yeah, you, you can, I loved it actually. Really, really much with a lot of coffee. Yeah, so yeah, so you cut it hey, here, sorry, and here. Right. So you cut it as like, oh, this look ugly, but it's okay. Yeah, you can just select it and when you will extrude it, it will just match, right? Because we have the projection applied. I can delete this one also and we can match things. So it's by cutting. And other things, either the, these bricks also had the same. I don't look the same. Oh, we moved it, right? So what we should have done, when we moved it, we should have moved it exact units like one meter, two meter, like that. We just moved it like crazy, it's like it's gonna work. No, because the texture is projecting with the scale in the world, it should move in the units also. So we would have moved one meter, it would match. Though right now this, uh, we can just quickly do that actually. 
this one and we check how far it is x and we can make it okay this two oh it's meter actually okay let's see so yeah right so now all the uh, is 20 no that's weird so no so this i will try making we, we can keep it for now okay so let's not waste time but the, the brick match so all the bricks will match what we can do in this what i did so just to show like some bricks are out and some bricks in so i create that model uh, this one have some modifier and this which is fun i use a lot of modifiers to what do we call it mm. like I, I forgot the word so which yeah literally uh, we call it what we call it so it's like you can reuse those things. You don't need to apply the modifiers. You can keep it and you make changes and the modifier just help you do things. So I can move the brick here and if I want a brick and I can move the edge and it extruding it, adding bevel. And when I uh, want to export, I can select this empty and export it. It export all the children with it. I use, there's another plugin called uh, Blender to Unreal, which is real good. I forgot to uh, install it here. This is a new laptop. I didn't have my personal computer, have everything. I didn't want to show you that as well because it's crazy. Like a lot, a lot of add-ons. You're just like, oh, I can never see anything. So yeah, so this is basically the tileable, and you can use the uh, UV projection to uh, visualize how it will be, and then you send it to the game engine, and it will work flawlessly. Just keep in mind the text density, and see the text density helps us define how big these bricks will look. Because this is stone wall, stone walls are usually big, so we define that in there, and this will work. And there are like you will see there is this thing. Uh, so what comes when you have bigger assets? Like imagine uh, we have like 10 meter large wall and you have two meter of texture. It's gonna tile five times on that. And you surely gonna see repetition, right? That's when our happy little blending comes in. So you blend different textures with uh, different vertex colors to hide that repetition. And what I did, I did two things. I used the vertex blend and I used these decals. So you place in between some broken decals. The decals is a whole another thing to talk about, but you can go and check. It's basically just a normal map. Place on the, it just visually give you detail that something is broken, like it's, it's broken. So this, uh, this I have made on the surface one and I have on the corner. So like see here, uh, let me add. So you feel uh, in the game, in the corner, this corner is broken, but this is not actually broken. This is low poly, like L-shaped model with a bevel. And I put that thing. So as you see, this, it should look hard because this is under the floor. You don't need to worry. And that other thing, you see there's some damage. Okay? So that really, really helps to sell the thing. Like, yeah, so this have some details. It's like fake, fake it until you make it. So that thing. So, yeah, so this is, uh, the, uh, this is uh, most important. Again, the textile density will play a key role in here. And this is a lot of, I know, the model work. And yeah, so you can create and uh, most beautiful things ever where combining all these. Yes. Uh, what kind of input do you have for the size of the wall? Because we have a different uh, shape for the brick. So if uh, if I just show quickly show you the here. So I have three textures basically used. One is plaster, which is like covered all the bricks. One is damaged bricks, which are like more to add information. One is a normal newly made brick type of thing, not that much information. So wherever I had the side thing, I made it fully plaster because I didn't have, I didn't want to make another one like a rubble thing, like more undulation, like concrete, broken concrete type of thing. So I use this thing. So I use the same texture to cover up some of the bricks to make it look uh, like they, they have some plaster on there, in there and some of them like broken, but I use the same texture to the full opacity on the sides. So it, work like there is some sand or rubber like that. And I use some decals also. Uh, decal on top, I place it, so it look, it have noise in there. Uh, question, yes. Uh, is this material for blending, is it for game engine or it's in Blender? Or you, both? you can do both. Uh, if uh, I will share uh, some of the resources for that also. But you did like in Blender? Yeah, so this is like, because I know um, you can do it in there. We have done it uh, in the engine. Uh, we have done it in the 3D software also. Uh, we have some tools uh, previously have worked, which just, you know, back and forth the two things. You you can assign it there and you can bring it back and you can transfer the vertex color. But keeping it in one place make more uh, sense. And in engine, you can see it there in the engine. And if you're working in Blender, you're making things in Blender, then do it there. If you're working, exporting it to game engine, I will suggest do it there. 
because you can see it there uh, more uh, prominently how it's going to look in game. Was it painted in Blender and exported? Or was it painted in the engine? Yeah, this was painted in the engine. Okay. That's why I'm showing like that's why like this uh, all the decals placement and all this brick placement I have done in Blender, but word test blending I did in the engine because that was my software of uh, work to showcase this. So yeah, so it's all up to you what you're gonna do. So with this and yeah, so then we come to the environments. Environments are basically we just club all what we learned previously into one. Environment is just a big space. And with this, this is ugly. If you go to the R station, you see our oh, man. This is not up to what I can do or what I have done. Because I took a very big of a task, creating all the assets, creating all the asset by myself or big castle, everything, doing lighting, shaders and everything it takes time. And this challenge runs for three months, it's for Arshin challenge. And if you still, uh, if you're interested how I did that, you can go to my YouTube and there's all the video recorded there, like two hours of video, just me making things. Okay, I did not finish it, huh? so, yeah. Because I, I, I was almost on time. I, I submitted it and they said like the clock just shut down. It was like I was, it was not uploading. And then I just, oh. and I forgot to record also in the rush. And so the last video is not there. And uh, let me know if you need it and people ask for it, I will maybe record it again. So that there, and I will show you quickly how I use modifier to make the broken version of it and how I use the fast, uh, use the, the same tools to fasten the thing. So what I did, um, basically I had, uh, I hope I had screen flip. Let's check on our session if I have. Okay. So uh, th this, this is the other side of it. And you see there are like a lot of props, right? And you feel uh, this was a tavern after this is a house and that will be the Smith house. This will be a market. And then I just giving myself more work and more pain, which I won't be able to finish. There was no one to tell me like a dude, calm down. Just make that one corner and be happy. I thought, no, I will make a whole village. Resettlement, I will make it. I will make a whole game. I will make a dragon fly from there and kill them. Skyrim. So, so, but no. So that is not true always. It's too much work. Okay, don't do it. So, so if you, if you want to do it, compose a scene. Compose a beautiful scene. Watch Bob Ross video. Use the resources. Put it in. Make happy little trees. Just have fun. Okay. Don't make everything from scratch. Th that's just too much. That's what I do now. I use resources and I just make scenes. Um, and I want to come back to it, but it's too much of a work. And I know it is a work, and then I just don't work on it. So what? So you see, there are like wooden boards, props. There are like more than 50 things in there. Uh, these houses are used from Sketchfab. They are like from one German museum, open air museum. These houses are there. So I use it. What I did, uh, I use geometry node to put cards on top of it, the hay cards. I said it will look good. So that's what I did. I was like, oh, it's mine. So no, no I, I mentioned that it's there. So I just put card on there so it looked good in game. Like it looked fluffy. And yeah, so a lot of room. So what I did, I used the same uh, UV project on all the props. So I did, I did quickly low poly model, could put some information, I projected the UVs uh, and just put the wood texture on that. And it's just, that's how I was able to see, you will see the same texture. This is the same texture from the well. So the metal is there and the wood is there and I, I mapped all the different things on the different props. This have the same texture from my well. Uh, so um, uh, I wish I had, uh, and also like I lost this project. I, the, the, when I went to the folder, it was empty. I don't know where it went. So now I wanted to show you the files, but it's not there anymore. So all the assets are using the same one texture for, from the well. So all the assets are made using that and using projection textures. And there's another plugin called Trims, which can, you can use uh, if you're working with Trims. And there is one uh, called uh, GrabDoc. Uh, both are free. And you, if you're working specifically with the Trims, then you can do. And there is one talk from, uh, on GTC Vault like from Sunset Overdrive, uh, they have this uh, Trims workflow. So just Trim workflow on Sunset Overdrive, that's just awesome. And you just, just go to GC World, or maybe I will update the presentation and update the link. Uh, you can download it tomorrow and you can see. But yes, yeah, so we'll come back, don't look at this, don't look at this, okay? This is, okay, don't look at this. Look at the bridge, look at how awesome the castle is. Like, so, so the bridge, how I made it is usually, uh, I made two pieces, one for this end, one in the middle, which will repeat, and then end the same duplicated on the other end. And then what I did, I boolean a noise sphere to make it broken. 
basically it's just one modifier and I'll use the same to create four different pieces for the castle and I can just duplicate it in the game and create n number. So that the castle is different, that castle is different. If you see there on the mountain there's castle and there's far away there's one tower over there. So it's basically, yeah, I was having Skyrim feeling like we lit with fire, dragons are coming and uh, but no. I, actually the castle is supposed to be burned, like dragons don't want kings to be, they want to be the kings. And that first, that that supposed to be a cave before, I thought the dragon lives there. But then I said, nah, no, no, calm down. So I just made it a castle. <laughs> so, so this is my very first attempt to create a huge area. Um, and there are two reasons, because first I had a computer, I had a laptop before, I could not do it. Um, but this time I have worked with levels and stuff, I wanted to try my level art skills also. So that again, to the question, do that specifically, don't create everything. If you want to do level design or level art, do that, use resources. So I will just quickly show if we have time, uh, we almost then, right? Oh uh, yeah, so let me just finish this quickly. If you have time, then we can do it. So we already saw all the files, okay? I'm not, I, I'm sorry, I cannot share the files, right? But the presentation is there and all the uh, links to it is there. So this is the way, I will share uh, the, the same props, it's everywhere you see uh, all the objects and you can put touch to it. Like imagine you have a cup, you imagine this from the medieval, how will you will make it? You can do that and you can uh, use it. You can watch these videos. Simon Fush is a paid tutorial, but it's super awesome. And he also have this blended shader in Blender. You can download it, you can use it. And he made it for terrains, but you can use it anywhere. You can blend multiple materials together in Blender using vertex color. So that he have it on his Gumroad, you can grab it. And these are, this is the article, those are videos on our session, just watch it, it's like super awesome, so informative. And diorama. So when you want to create diorama and you uh, can have, uh, it's basically the corner, you might have seen so many isometric scenes in there, right? So this is basically the diorama. You create this tiny piece and grow a little bit more from props. So you use stylable textures or stuff like that. And here like blending, like just create this bridge with props uh, or that small market. And there are some uh, resources to learn more. They might not be Blender specific. They might be done with other 3D software, but you can, you know, transfer the information so smoothly. And yeah, so for the inspiration, you can do concept art, paintings, or some photograph you click. And Amsterdam is beautiful. That's what I'm doing. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I want to create that. I want to make these houses. But you can get crazy. And there are some resources for that. Some community to join. The Experience Point and Dynasty is super awesome for environment art. You can join them. And just watch. Uh, these are Unreal specific. If you anyone use Unity, I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't any link for Unity. I don't use it. Uh, it's mostly Unreal. And GDC World. If you want to be a game artist, GDC is the one place you have to watch. Just keep watching it. Just binge watch it. Like Netflix. Okay. <laughs> and like other things. Oh, sorry. Just. <laughs> Thank you.